Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. So, um, you know, I wanted to walk you through the process because I have these claimed 420 amp cells, uh, amp hour cells, and I wanted to walk you through my process for uh, testing capacity. Uh, and, and so, you know, this is just sort of how I do it. I know other people might do it differently, but, um, but yeah, so first things first is, you know, I've, I've used a, you know, they call it a regulated power supply. Um, but, uh, this one I picked up from circuit specialists because when I was started working with these heavier duty cells, like these 280 amp hour cells, I, I needed something that could provide a little bit more current. And this was one of the few options that actually provided, um, you know, up to 20 amps of current. So uh, when you're charging lithium iron phosphate batteries, basically what you're doing, you know, they even show the, the, the charging voltage here. It's 3.65. Um, this is a little bit on the high side for whatever reason. It's just probably a hair over. So I just have to make sure it, it drops down to 3.65 and stays there. Um, but the way you tr charge these is what they call constant voltage, constant current. And so this is set at the constant voltage of 365. And it will charge up to a little over 20 amps um, constantly until this battery gets too full uh, to accept um, power. And then the current starts to drop off to, to basically zero. Um, once it's full um, and and you should really stop it uh, around uh, one amp once it gets to that point um, you shouldn't be uh, charging it at that full 3.65 volts probably drop it down to um, 3.5 is a pretty safe voltage for saturation I think um, but anyway so uh, I, I keep I turn I just turned this on I keep it on for a little while um, just to make sure uh, everything is set and everything settles in terms of the voltage uh, you know I, at, I attached the uh, positive lead already um, and again on these cells it's black positive uh, and then this sort of gray negative and so uh, you, you feed it directly positive to positive negative to negative when you're charging um, you know for this DC to DC converter I actually custom made these uh, 8 um, gauge welding wire uh, just because I wanted something that could hold 20 amps pretty consistently no voltage drop um, but yeah now I, I feel pretty secure that this this is sort of leveled off but the other thing I do just as a best practice is I do use a voltage meter and I want to check to confirm that per the voltage meter the the voltage being applied is is the actual three six five so yeah so now that I'm holding them on there steady three six five so I just validated that yep three six five I just like to double check just to make sure um, basically don't trust just a single implement and now that uh, now that this is uh, all warmed up and ready to go, all I do is I attach the negative lead. Now this is only 365 volts, so there's usually um, nothing like a spark or anything like that. Well, maybe a little bit. And as you'll notice, it jumped right up to uh, 20. Um, 0.94 amps. The voltage is sagging a little bit, but I think it's just because uh, it's taking all of that power. Now I just put the camera down so uh, I could tighten down that nut. Um, but yeah, it's feeding power through. Um, yeah, sort of settling at that 3.38 um, volts, and uh, and so it's just going to charge up this this battery overnight, and then basically uh, I, I should have a full battery by morning time uh, that I can um, do for the uh, second half of this capacity test which is the the discharge test so um, you know let's just leave it alone for the night and uh, we'll get back to it in the morning uh, 
Okay, well, so there you see it, the uh, constant current dropped to below 1, so it's 0.77 right now. Yeah, and so basically as the cell voltage increases, the voltage out of the DC power supply will also increase, um, but the voltage, or the uh, amperage then drops. So uh, we're under uh, 1 full amp, so that means that this is pretty much full. Um, and I can say that just based on the amount of time um, that it took uh, to go from what was probably, you know, even 50 to 60% full uh, to 100% full now, or this is probably close to like a 90, 95 to 98% charge or state of charge, um, that wasn't enough time. Not, not for a 420 amp hour battery. So I don't even know if these are going to have the same capacity as uh, the 280 amp hour batteries that I purchased. So let's uh, unhook these posts and uh, get on to the next step in testing the uh, battery capacity. Okay, now here's the next step in the process. I have uh, of these 420 amp hour batteries uh, hooked up to this is basically just a power sink right it's a uh, takes the the power in from the battery puts it into a heat sink and then the fan just blows it off so basically you're kind of wasting <laughs> um, the power that you just put it put you know put in when I do these capacity tests like during winter it's actually enough between the DC to DC converter uh, charging the battery in this discharging to test capacity to actually heat a room so that's kind of fun but uh, I should have this all preset but this comes with uh, just a basic uh, 6 volt uh, DC power cable to power this device up I think it can take 12 but I think it's it's supposed to be uh, a 6 volt and so I'll just hook this up into the back and start up uh, the tester all right, now I already have this set up for lithium iron phosphate. You'll notice that it has a 2.5 volt low voltage cutoff. Uh, this is really the point where there's no more energy left in the battery anyway. You shouldn't discharge below it. Uh, so, but if I click here, uh, see it's already reset. Um, but because there's no voltage input, it's going to go right back to the low voltage. Uh, and so I'm just going to go ahead and check through here and make sure everything there's nothing um, out of the ordinary and then yeah so now this will this will draw up to I believe it is 20 24 amps which should sh still be well within you know the even like a small fraction of the discharge power rating of this battery all right now we're all hooked up um, and once I press this button, it's going to start um, the discharge cycle. What I should say is with the draw from here, a 280 amp hour battery takes about 14 hours to discharge. Uh, it's a little after 6 a.m. right now, so this should all fit within a day if it's the capacity I think it is. If it's actually 420 amp hour though, uh, this discharge cycle should take uh, over 20 hours. So I'm just going to go ahead and start. And so you see here, uh, the voltage has dropped down to 3.39 volts. That's a, you know, so even though you're charging this at up to 3.65 volts, uh, it actually, lithium iron phosphate tip typically settles somewhere between 3.35 and 3.45. It's a very flat voltage curve. And then under load. So yeah, now we're drawing 19.8 amps. So you can just basically... Uh, divide 420 by 2, right, uh, because, or, well, 420 by 2, but it's essentially, it should take 21 hours um, based on this draw, uh, or at least this battery should require 21 hours to discharge at this rate. Like I said, I, I actually think it's going to be closer to probably uh, the, the 14 that we see with the uh, 280 amp hour batteries. So. A uh, good thing is I don't have to watch this. It has a low voltage cutoff and uh, I can just run off and do other things. 
Well, I like to check uh, midway through in the cycle. Um, in this case, we're about five hours in, and I gotta go run some errands. So hopefully this is still um, going, you know, by the time I get back, it'll start beeping when it hits low voltage. But I'll, I'll say this, I'm, I'm offended on multiple levels for this battery because uh, not only is it not 420 amp hours, which, you know, whatever, I understand that. Um, you know, a lot of times they'll mislabel by a little bit, but these are also clearly uh, grade B cells with, you know, the barcode under under this fake CE stamp uh, um, scraped off. Uh, but just based on the, the weight, the dimensions, everything else, these are very clearly... Uh, either 272 or 280 uh, amp hour cells so uh, you know so it, it, it's basically false or misleading advertising on <laughs> so many different levels um, these are actually based on what I'm seeing so far going to produce or, or contain less energy uh, than my standard 280 amp hour uh, grade A cells so uh, yeah this is this is beyond false or misleading advertising so I will be uh, putting in a uh, dispute, so. All right, we're back. Um, about probably three quarters of the way in at this point. Um, so, again, now you see it's 2.86 volts. This means we're getting very, very close to the cutoff. Um, I, I mean, if I had to guess, it would probably hit about 260. Um, with this so it's not even going to go the full 14 hours like it would have with one of the 280 amp hour batteries um, and, and, and like I said, that's that's really not bad, right? These are actually um, fairly energy dense batteries uh, But the problem is they they were just um, Not not advertised accurately, right? You you can't sell a uh, 420 amp hour battery that's actually only a 270 to 280 amp hour battery uh, and, and the thing the thing is too I mean their price was competitive enough that they probably could have just sold these um, accurately advertised um, and so uh, yeah I mean it's too good to be true to be 420 amp hours but um, they would have been a little bit on the expensive side for 280 amp hours but they would have been you know still somewhat reasonable um, but you know given the quality of the wrapping the quality of the terminals you know some of the other aspects of it uh, I'm not I wouldn't buy them for this price if they were advertised as 280 amp hours um, and you know at this point I, I just have a bad taste in my mouth from this ESARE company anyway so I just wouldn't buy anything or recommend anything from them um, at all and so uh, yeah it's safe to say that their products are not as advertised so uh, like I said we'll probably only last another maybe two hours um, at this discharge rate um, and then this this will start beeping so I'll bring us back when that happens well and there you have it the moment of truth so yeah, 238.86 amp hours. It'll still draw a little bit more, um, you know, kind of sags down to the 2.5 mark, but um, it, really not a whole lot more than that. Um, so yeah, this is uh, <laughs> this is just barely more than you know half of the the claimed uh, capacity on the sticker. And you know, I know a lot of people have mentioned they said. Uh, you know they've seen bad um, sellers from China for lithium and I'm sure you, you can get like bad deals but then you can get good deals too so this is that um, ESARE company um, I, I can't recommend them I wouldn't buy from them um, yeah I won't buy from them again I'm gonna actually submit a uh, um, request for uh, you know for full reimbursement from Ali uh, Express because you know they didn't send the product that they advertised so you kind of have to play it by ear you know go by what other people's feedback has been uh, about the seller about the b battery about the quality of the battery uh, I would you know I would stick to things like CATL 
uh, Eve batteries, those are all pretty good, and then, of course, go with the highly rated seller. Well, I hope that was uh, helpful. I hope it was informative, uh, kind of demonstrating how I test out these batteries, um, their capacity, and, yeah, how you, how you make sure you're actually getting what you pay for. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel, and thank you for watching.